Should a Christian tithe? Should a Christian tithe? <laughs> These are some great questions. They are. You know, um, let me uh, very quickly, uh, Jeff, find me a passage dealing with tithing in the Old Testament. Um, the word tithe comes to an old uh, word in the Hebrew language. It actually just means a tenth. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's what it simply means. Now, the Christians were required to tithe, but I also want to say there was a little bit more than just a tenth that they would give by the time they dealt with their taxes and and everything. Um, Jeff, did you find that real quick? Uh, Yeah, and it's in Leviticus, but also Numbers 18.26, and it says, uh, Thus speak unto the Levites, say unto them, uh, When you take of the children of Israel the tithes which I have given you from them for your inheritance, then you shall offer up a heave offering of it for the Lord, even a tenth part of the tithe. All right. Thank you. And I appreciate several passages that. Uh, deal with that. You know, it's a part of that Old Testament law, right. and in particular it dealt with more because there was a greater part that they would end up giving by the time they offered all their sacrifices and everything, but the yeah. tithe, the tenth part, yeah. was really more the part that would go to the Levitical priesthood to care yeah. for them. Well, not only that, it wasn't just money. I think, I think that's what you're bringing out there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. A lot of people get confused about should a Christian tithe and immediately that is attached to their checking account. Exactly. Right. And, and it's specified in Leviticus 27 verse 30 and all the tithe of the land, whether of the seed of the land or the fruit of the tree. So a 10th of each of those. Exactly. Uh, and and it certainly was a way for God to right. carry out the care for his people that were uh, of the Levite tribe and what they had to do. Right. Um, then we fast forward to the new Testament, because as we talked on this program over and over, we're under new Testament law, not old Testament law. Right. And so under new Testament law, to give you a simple answer is should a Christian tithe? No, not in a sense of the tithing of the old Testament and being a 10%. Now, should Christians give of what they've been prospered? Certainly so. And the, the answer to that is going to be found in 1 Corinthians 16, 1 and 2, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6 through 8. Um, and, and, you know, we'll take the time to read those. But remember, this is part of the heart when, whenever we think about giving. And that's really what 2 Corinthians 9 is dealing with. And I think we can do it as early as Acts chapter 2 where you see that they there were some that didn't have. And so what did they do? They had all things common. Acts chapter 4 and chapter 5, you see them selling possessions, coming and offering it to the apostles to be distributed to make sure that there was no need. And um, and that's really what Paul was dealing with in 1 Corinthians 16 to tell them, you know, upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by in stores. God has prospered them so that there be no gatherings when I come. And so is a Christian to give? Yes. Is he to tithe in the sense that he has to give 10%? No. Right. You want to add to it? <laughs> you covered it very well. Well, number one, we're not, you, you kind of said it. We're not, we're not Jews. We're not uh, Hebrews. We're not under the Old Testament law. That, that, that command to tithe is Old Testament law. And so we are under the law of Christ. And according to that, you quoted 1 Corinthians 15, which that's what I was looking at was that you do it as, as you, you lay something aside, storing up as you may prosper. Well, you don't know how much that's going to be. Again, it doesn't say 10%. You go to 2 Corinthians 9, and there he talks about a cheerful giver, uh, talking about the heart, and he goes on to describe that as that that's proof of your, that's proof of your love. And we talk about the idea that we don't want to give God out of the leftovers. That's right. And that's certainly true. And, uh, you know, the widow's might would be a great example. We could talk about that, you know, she gave all that she had and then giving two, um, she gave more than all those that gave a lot. Now, what I, what I would argue in this and, and, and Marilyn, I appreciate your comment. Um, uh, and she put, should be more than 10%. I'd say that depends, Marilyn. There could be times people can't give 10%. Um, and, and I know some people say, well, if God expected 10% of the old Testament, then he wouldn't expect anything less. But remember God in, under the old Testament allowed, uh, for lesser offerings, depending upon the poverty, he didn't excuse away not doing anything, but he took into consideration what was possible of people. Yeah. 
And um, I would say there could be situations that 10% would not be enough, where other situations 10% could be more than what is expected. And I always use this example. <clears throat> Let's say here is a man, he, and he, I'm not good with math, so we're going to use simple numbers, okay? Two men. One man goes out, and he's a single guy, doesn't have hardly any responsibilities other than just to care for himself, and he makes $100 that week. 10% would be $10. Let's take another man and let's say he's married and has two kids and he makes a hundred dollars that week. 10% would be $10. Do you think that both should give $10 and say that they're pleasing to God? You're asking me? Yeah, I'm asking <laughs> you. <laughs> uh, well, I think it goes back to first Corinthians uh, 16. As you prosper, what does that word prosper mean? Prosper means something different for different people. Yeah, right. and, and in this situation, one that has the opportunity to sow more bountifully, Second Corinthians nine, mm -hmm. because he doesn't need the full ninety dollars to live on. Ten percent might not be enough for him to give, because he might could, out of, if his heart is right, could afford to give fifty dollars mm -hmm. and live on the fifty, mm -hmm. because right. he doesn't have any other responsibility. Now, I'm going to go to the other extreme on this. All right. Down in Paraguay, you know, there uh, so there were a lot of people that that was their number one question for us was tithing because a lot of the denominational uh, religions had come in and they immediately attached their checking account to them being a member at that particular place. So we got questions all the time about tithing. As soon as they heard that the Church of Christ – does not require tithing, then boy, they were all excited because it was like free church. Yep. You, you've got the wrong concept. If that's your idea, if you're using mm -hmm. it to get out of something. Yeah. Right. And, and, and I think that's, what's very, very important to, to teach one. It's, it's a personal thing between you and God. Amen. And to get to a point that we have to say, well, this person should give X. We can't say that. That's going to be between them and God on the judgment. We don't have a percentage. God, and under New Testament law, does not say how much to give. And so for me to say you should give whatever, then I cannot, I can't prove that by, by Scripture, can I? No, not by Scripture, because really when it comes right down to it, if you are giving as a cheerful giver, mm -hmm. it should be on your heart that you're going to give more. And don't forget also what the Bible says that you can give of yourself. Yep. Not just monetarily. You can give of yourself as well. well. I would go as far as to argue that in my opinion, no, I'm going to, I'm going to say it. I think I've proved it from scripture. A, a Christian that has the right heart would never be able to give as much as they'd want. That's right. You can't outgive God. And, and when your heart is right and you realize then there's always, and I think that's why, you know, I mean, like I, I'll use milestone congregation is a very giving congregation. And I know there are people that are giving very abundantly and they're doing so cheerfully. And, and, and most likely I would guess above the 10% mark. I, and, and then all of a sudden there's another need that arises and guess what they're still do. They're still give some more because their heart is a, that of giving and not of selfishness. And that would go to first Corinthians 13. Love doesn't serve self. Right. And so it's a heart of wanting to be able to give. And so I, w I would love for people to get away from a percentage. I would love for people to get away from what do I have to do mm -hmm. and then take on more of the attitude of what can I do? Amen. I want to do as much as I can, whether it's giving of self, giving my finances, uh, because there's a lot of people that really struggle with this uh, whenever it comes to uh, being satisfied with finding peace because, you know, when have I given enough? You know, uh, and I've seen some people be condemning of others because the reality is, and we could probably spend hours upon hours upon this discussion because, you know, well, if you spend and drive a forty thousand dollar car or thirty thousand or twenty thousand, well, what if you only drove a three thousand? Could you give more? You know, 
this is something that you need to think about your heart between you and God and be careful, Matthew chapter 7, before trying to say what other yeah. people ought to do. Amen. Right. Absolutely. Because using that example right there, somebody might have a, you know, a fancy car and then everybody's judging them. Why aren't they giving more money or something? Well, they don't know that maybe that fancy car was, you know, something they inherited from, uh, from a, a dead relative or something. Yeah, but and they should have sold it and give the money to the church. Troy. <laughs> <laughs> you can never win with these situations. Well, and that's the point. And we need to be very careful right. and just teach that our heart ought to be that of servitude and giving and using everything we have to the Lord. And I think when that point, when, when we get there, I don't know that we're ever say, Oh, well, I've done enough. Mm -mm. If you get to that point, mm. then there is a heart issue. Mm. Right. Cause you can't outgive God. 